Hey, glad to see you stopping by. We got a great show for you today. I mean a most excellent show. You don't want to miss this one. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And today, it's the 14th of August. It is Wednesday. Which means I should probably remind you that I've got a live streaming event tomorrow. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my co-host Taylor, we go on live for about an hour and a half and we're taking requests from viewers like you. We're looking at stocks that you want to look at. I share hot stocks with you all week. This is a chance for you to bring us a hot stock. Come on folks, we're looking for stocks that can make us money. We're not just looking for light at the end of the tunnel. So bring us a hot chart, some hot news, a big catalyst. I'll go over the information, Taylor will go over the chart, and we'll give you our opinions, whatever the heck that's worth to you. Now, if you really want your chart looked at, you're going to have to get your ticker in early. I go first come, first serve. And I do have to announce I'm going to do the video earlier in the day. Well, as soon as I put up that announcement, the tickers start coming in. By the time 4 o'clock rolls around, I've got all the tickers I can handle. So, to be fair, we're saving two spots during the show. Drop your ticker during the show. We're going to pick the two hottest charts and we'll talk about those charts. That's normally about eight tickers a show. Hope to see you there. Four o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Thursday, tomorrow. So what we're going to do today is talk about hot penny stocks, but we're not going to focus in on a hot penny stock. I trade penny stocks every day. These are stocks under five bucks you can find on any market. And I'm always looking for hot penny stocks to share with you. And I normally find those hot penny stocks by looking at the charts. And that's what you're here for today. I'm going to show you how to see a hot chart, one particular setup. That's all you've got to know. You don't have to know a lot about anything to do something. Take driving, for example. How much do you have to know to actually drive? Do you have to have a driver's license? I mean, without it in your pocket, are you dumb? You can't figure out how to drive? You don't need a license. Do you have to know how to fix the car? Do you even have to know what country the car comes from? No. All you got to know is where the gas is, the brake is, the steering wheel, and maybe the gear shift. If you can figure those things out, you're everywhere and anywhere you want to be, anytime you want to be there. That's all you really need to know. I'm going to show you how to identify a particular setup on a chart that runs six, seven, eight out of 10 times high probabilities of breakouts. I call it the atypical breakout chart. An atypical breakout chart is the easiest chart as far as I'm concerned to see. It looks the same over and over again. You got that 200 day SMA coming down fast and furious with the price underneath it. When the 200 starts to level out, the price finally has the weight pulled off of its back and shoots through the 200 and that's a breakout. That's when it starts to run. And this is what I want to share with you today, how to find them and then focus in on the four or five signals that determine if it's strong, stronger, or a very strong setup for a breakout. Now understand folks, this is the easiest thing I do and it's the easiest thing you'll ever do. I am telling you to find a diamond and I could give you a book with 300 pages and say, find the word diamond in that book. What a task. I can't even guarantee you the word diamonds in the book, or I could be holding up flashcards that have different pictures on them, right? And I'm going to ask you to tell me when you see a diamond, how long does it take for you to see a diamond compared to a star or a circle split second? right? A split second. So in a very short amount of time, you can see a lot of cards. Well, that's all we're doing. You don't have to know anything about charts to be able to do this. All we're looking for is a portion of the chart down in the bottom corner, current times. We're looking for that pattern. Find that pattern, zoom in on the four or five signals of strength. You got yourself a hot chart. If you find them, now go look at the news. Now go look at the filings, match some hot news to that hot chart you got yourself a hot penny stock. And I want to show you some examples and all those signals I'm talking about. You ready? So am I, can't you tell? Vroom! Let's go, folks. Welcome to my playground. This is my free trading platform, Think or Swim. Think or Swim. These are my viewers. <laughs>
I spend a lot of time here, folks, not just monitoring my own plays, but doing research and due diligence. And you can do this with whatever platform you have. The only thing I will suggest is that you need to figure out the easiest and the quickest way to see charts. You want to see as many of them as you can with the least amount of effort. When I first came here, I would bring up a scan, grab a ticker, change over to the chart, type in the ticker. Oh my God, was that a pain in the butt. So I discovered I could put a button over here, choose a number or a color, and attach that to a quick screen. Then all I had to do was click my button and voila, look at that, instant charts. I love this. But this became a pain, so I discovered. What I'm doing is I'm looking over here for that special pattern. I'm looking for my diamond. But my eyeballs have to leave the chart and come over here and find that next two with my little itty bitty cursor and click it. Then my eyes jump over here. Then my eyes dart back over here. Folks, if you're looking at hundreds, even a thousand or more charts, that's a real pain. And that's not a lot of charts. You can go through a thousand charts easy in a half hour. No problem. Remember, flashcards. So what I found is that I could actually take my scan and turn it into a watch list. And by connecting them, I could get my charts over here big and I didn't have to touch any button. Even better, I didn't need my cursor anymore. I could actually use my keyboard and look at that. I can change charts without even looking. Ah, da, 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 da. <laughs> right? So this makes it easy for me because now all I have to do is keep my eyes focused on this section right down there. That's all I'm really concerned with. Now, the pass does make a little bit of difference when you consider you're going to need supports and resistances, your rungs on the ladder that you're going to use to climb out. These are your entry points and your exit points. But outside of that, I am looking at a current breakout. That's all I'm really interested in. So I would just go through the charts just like this about that speed, folks. I mean, how much time does it take to see a chart that fits your description? Now, these are close, but you know, you can see that's on a downtrend. That's not what we're looking for. That's already broke out. So we're just flying by these flashcards. I might look at this one, but it looks like she's pretty much gone past her breakout. So I do this all the time. I mean, in the evening, <laughs> I'll be watching TV. My TV is right there. I'm looking at it right now. And bring my eyes down, I'm looking at my computer. Well, while I'm watching a movie at night, I will bring up charts. And I would just scan them during commercials or whenever, just looking for hot charts. It's a hobby. Maybe it's a problem. Well, today, I went out looking between 2 o'clock and 3.30 for atypical breakouts that I could share with you. I have got all of these right here, folks. Every single one of these is a atypical breakout chart. They're hot charts. They all look ready to move to me. So you can look at the tickers. I'll try to remember to call them out to you. These are probably going to move in the next few days, tomorrow, the next day, the rest of this week. But if you're watching this video six months down the road, don't worry that the charts are outdated. We're really not looking at the charts to get stock information on the company. We're looking at the charts for lessons and patterns, for signals to discover what we are looking for. And I just want to repeat this over and over so that you get to understand exactly what you're looking for and how easy this really can be. So let's jump on into this. We're going to look at two stocks that I just covered. ZEP I covered yesterday because it had an atypical breakout. Now, as I said, I really don't concern myself with the history of the chart, but I do want to know where the supports and resistances are. I'm looking for where the price stops and changes directions over and over again. You can see that, right? She stopped there, so we got a support resistance there. And I'm grabbing them all the way down. Now, when we are looking at these supports and resistances, look at them as doors. These are doorways into your trades and doorways out of your trades. When you get on top of a support, she's going to bounce on top of that. And once she feels secure, she's going to start to climb to the next resistance. When she gets close to that resistance, she's going to beat her head. Maybe she'll tap her way through and get on top. Maybe she's going to fall. This is a considerating point of when you may want to get out. So underneath these lines are our exits 
on top are our entries. Now, this is a perfect example of an atypical breakout chart. We've got our 200-day SMA falling. Our price is falling parallel to it, right up underneath it. Now, notice, and this is real important. This is one of my signals I look for in all of my atypical breakouts. She is laying the prices on top of the 200 haul. This purple line is the 200 haul, and it turns blue when it starts to climb. Now, most of you have no idea what the 200 haul is, and I'm sure you don't have it on your charts. You should. I've had the 200 haul on my charts for about two, three years now, and I have noticed there is a special relationship between the 200 haul and the price. One you do not get with the price in a standard 200-day MA. The 200 haul has as much power and as much authority as the 200-day MA. They both take 200 days of prices and average them together. But the 200 haul puts more credence on current prices. It can relate to the price. So we see a buddy ship, a partnership going on with these two over and over again. See how she's laying on the 200 firmly. She came down here. She took a dip down to a low bubble. Low bubble could be a catalyst. Doesn't hurt to have it there. 52-week low, three-year low, all-time low. These are flashing for sale signs. There are shoppers that go around looking for these low bubbles. Then they go looking at the fundamentals. They'll weigh the company up. And if this is a sweet price, if it's undervalued now, they'll come in and buy it up. Well, normally you see that happen with the bounce off immediately. If it hasn't got value, it'll normally just go sideways. Well, this one jumped pretty bloody quick. She dipped just underneath the 200 haul like a rubber ball, right? A rubber ball goes under the water and then comes out and shoots out of the water. Or think of it like a cat, a cat crouching down just a couple inches to jump many feet. Well, that's what happened here. She just came under the 200 and she launched. And this is what I want you to remember. The price likes to launch off of the 200 haul all the way to the 200 MA and through it. Folks, over and over again, I see when the price is between both 200s, when the price is between both 200s and the 200 haul turns blue, you will normally see the price drop down to the 200 haul and use it like a springboard, a catapult, and will jump off of it hard. It will go through every single SMA, the 20, the 50, and the 200 and shoot through it. This is a perfect setup here. Next thing you want to be looking for is all the SMAs to be climbing. You don't want them mixed up, some coming down, some going up. When all of them are turned up and climbing, you have draft like a fire. You feel that draft coming up. That helps the price to rise, that hot draft. Of course, we want as much volume as we can get. This is just regular volume on this stock. Nothing special. But if you see volume increasing, it was really strong that day and ended strong, that's always a good signal. The other thing you want to take notice of is the oscillators. This is how we measure the strength that is in the climb. I have got four oscillators I use. PPO, percentage price oscillator. A lot like your MACD. MACD and PPO both use the price. MACD uses the full price. The PPO uses a percentage of the price. And you read them the same way. You want that blue line on top of the other line climbing. These two look great. You want green bars accumulating. They're doing that. It's a little cool there, but boy, there's a lot of green bars there. And then the RSI, personally, I like this as high as you can freaking get it. We are in the overbought right now. It's at 72. I know a lot of people that don't want to get into a stock when it's in the overbought zone because overbought infers it's too much of a good thing. Like it has to come down immediately. Well, it is going to come down sooner or later, but it could be a while. This red bar, it was up there for two full days, has not come down yet. So don't be afraid to get into a stock that's in the overbought zone. That's what we're looking for. So we have got our SMAs all turning up. What we're looking for now, and it's happening, is our 200-day SMA to go flat. 
that is key folks that is one of the most important things a bounce off of the 200 haul and a flat 200 ma this 200 has ice on it whenever they jump up on it and it's like this all they do is slip and fall and the price comes down and sometimes they lose control and fall even further than where they started we wait for it to level off then they can get up on it even with ice then they'll bounce on it a few times and then take off so normally the first breakthrough isn't the biggest run but it is a nice run and it'll come down normally hit that 200 a few times and then take off so everything here is looking outstanding the other one was PSIG I covered this on Sunday now let's look at it from the vantage point I saw it at let me give you a little history on why I was interested in this stock it was involved in a merger with the SPAC the SPAC had the price of the stock at ten dollars for some reason in the middle of the merger before it was even closed the SPAC got thrown down to the OTC the ten dollars price fell down to three dollars then it got thrown back up to the Nasdaq but the price didn't follow the merger closed stock came on the market came on at three bucks a ten dollar stock jumped to six and then fell down to 65 cents and when we looked at it on Sunday she was at one dollar now we don't have a 200 day SMA we've only got the 50 which is top dog so I treat it like the 200 she is breaking out on that right now volume was very very strong she is way underneath where she should be this was a ten dollar stock that came in at three hit six and fell to 65 it just looked like she should be running but let's look at our oscillators well we had a turn up here an imminent crossover on our PPO our MACD was about ready to cross the signal line and our RSI was clear up at about 68 69 this was looking hot well the very next day she took off she went from a dollar up to two dollars and 82 cents you are looking at a hundred and eighty percent run she then fell back to about 89 percent no matter when you sold you got in on that one and made money so this was a hot atypical breakout chart that had all the signals take a look at another chart let's take a look at PEV Ooh, got a lot of lines here all right we don't care about the history all these lines are supports and resistances that I am using most of them came off of this big drop I used my Fibonacci I poked the top of the surge or drop and then I poked the extreme on the other side and this gives me algorithmic supports and resistances not attached to any historical price point but are valid for us to trade on and the price will respect well we had this big drop down here she fell down to this support she came up she hit the 200 here and right now she looks like she's on a breakout now what's important here folks is look our price is in between the 200s there's our 200 haul our 200 day MA everything is climbing all of our SMAs are on an up tilt our price is piercing through the 200 right now breaking through our resistances looking down at our oscillators every single one of them is climbing everything looks perfect it's not the best chart but it's got every single box ticked so Pev looks like she's ready for a breakout take a look at another one here all right this is already broke out but let's back this up to just before she did break out what do we see here well we see that she is bouncing on top of her 200 haul she is all over that right here she started to climb we got a bounce off of the 200 haul through every single SMA and it just tagged the 200 here now let's see she pulled back bounced off of her nine day SMA what you would hope for best scenario and then jumped right through the 200 the next bar zoomed through the 200 do you see how this setup works folks you can see how when everything is in line all of our SMAs are turned up and climbing she is pushing towards the 200 look at our oscillators every single one of them is on fire we're in the overbought here at 72 I mean she was hot now let's back it up let's look at our oscillators from the vantage point we would have seen it right they're still hot 
Now we didn't have any extra volume to talk about, but she was ticking all the different boxes. Everything was in place. 200 on top, price underneath, both of them falling, bouncing off a low bubble, getting on top of our 200. So the price was in the middle, all of our SMAs turning up, breaking through the 200. It's just that simple. This is JZXN, Juicy Holdings. Now you really can't see much on that, can you? But I could see there was a lot of blue over here telling me volume was in the picture. So let's zoom in on what's going on. She was in a downtrend. She had some big spikes showing she was interested in going up. Hit a low bubble. Off of that low, she immediately bounced, cutting through all of her SMAs and going up to the 200. Now she is floating on her nine day SMA. Look at our volume. Volume is getting stronger and stronger. Look at our bars. Our bars are getting bigger and bigger. Oscillators, PPO is climbing. MACD is climbing. RSI is in the overbought. Everything is looking good. Our 200-day our SMA is just now about ready to go flat. The perfect time for a breakout. Looking at NWXPF, this is Newport. All right, this is a little, little interesting because our 200-day SMA is just coming onto the board, and that in itself can make the price move. I have noticed since I've been trading, when a new SMA comes onto the board, in many cases, the price will gravitate to it. doesn't matter if the price is above it or below it. The price will just go to it. Sometimes it hangs around. Sometimes it just goes right back to what it was doing. Well, I see she's starting to move now. Look, we hit a low bubble right here come straight up. It was one day later that our 200 day SMA came into the picture. She started to climb at that point. She got over 50, which was boss at that point. And now she is climbing with everything starting to turn up. Now I am anticipating the 200 haul to show up tomorrow or the next day. And then the price is going to be in between. And I wouldn't be surprised to see the price dip down to the 200 haul and then jump right up to and through that 200. Our volume, we've got some big spikes here, but that is normal. That's what we normally get. Oscillators, we just had a crossover on our PPO. That's climbing. MACD is climbing. Big green bar showing us positive strength. And our RSI is cool. It's down at 54, but it is starting to push up right now. Take a look at, all right, this is an interesting one. This is a warrant. It's got a WS at the end. Most of your stocks that have a W or a slash WS are warrants. Warrants are stock that you can trade like anything else. Get in, get out, make your money. But most people like warrants because they're coupons. You're buying a coupon that you can use in three to five years to buy a share of stock at a guaranteed set low price. So the stock may be at three cents. Well, the warrant is three cents. The stock could be a dollar right now. And the warrant says you can buy a share for a buck 25. Well, who the heck wants to buy a warrant if, if you got to pay more for the share? Well, they're good for three to five years. So three years down the road, this stock may be worth 25 bucks. The warrant says you can buy a share for a buck and a quarter. How many warrants you got? You're going to make a ton of money. So these run when there's good news on the stock, but they don't get the same sort of volume stocks do. Stocks will get millions of shares, warrants will get 10,000, couple hundred thousand, but they'll move fast. They'll move hard because the spread between the ask and the bid is big. She'll do big jumps and once volume comes in, she'll jump a couple hundred percent when the stock only went up 20%. Well, we do look for the setups for the atypical breakouts on these as well, but you've got to be cautious because there is no liquidity. Without liquidity, you never know which direction the stream is pointing. It could be pointing down as soon as volume comes in and boink, it drops a lot further. So this does look very tempting. She is in between my 200 MA, my 200 haul. She has just dropped. She is looking like she could bounce. We had a lot of volume come in. It's worth the watch. But again, we got to be cautious with warrants. They don't play out the same way as normal equities do. Take a look at another one here. IUGNF. This is Imugene Limited. 
All right, so we don't care about the history, except we would get our supports and resistances. Let's zoom in on this. Now, in case you haven't noticed, folks, if I hadn't mentioned this, we're doing all of my heat searches on four hour time spans. That's what I do most of my searches on, but you can absolutely, no doubt about it, do it on a one hour. No doubt about that. So if you're in the day, you may want to look at your one hour chart during the day. That would be the better one. But at night, before the market's open, come over to your four hour. I think it's better. So here we go with our price falling down to the low bubble. Off of that low, she pushed herself up onto the 200 haul. Notice she was not on top of the 200 haul. She was piercing it, but she was not over it. Off of this low bubble, she got herself on top of the 200 haul. Then she got on top of the 50. We had a big bar here. A lot of excitement. Came back down to the 50. Is bouncing virtually off of our 200 haul and moving up. Now this isn't a super duper one. We don't have a lot of signals here. We have this set up, but we don't have a lot of what we're looking for. So I might pass on this one. Even the oscillators say she's showing more weakness now. See how they're all coming down. So I'm really not interested in this one. It kind of looked good, but it really isn't. Let's see what else I got here. This is INTZ Intrusion. She's had a buck 43 in a downtrend for a real long time with a lot of big spikes tapping the 200. We had a piercing here. That was back on uh, the 15th of July. Now this, this is a good one. It took some time, but this right here, folks, is a signal to me. This up pillar, an up pillar is a directional intentional spike that comes from wherever it's at, puts a big bar up and then spits a wick out above it. And then the next bar, I don't want to see come any lower than where this one started. So I want to see it come up, back down, no lower. Now this tells me she's looking for a breakout. Now, ideally, I would like to see the bar, the solid part, not go over the 200. It can go up to it, but I really don't want to see it go over. The wick, I want that wick to go as high as it can. And in all cases, the next bar on the four hour chart cannot fall any lower. Now, after these two bars, I'm really not worried about what happens here. I know she fell down here, where? To her 200 haul, laying on it, took a crouch, jump back up onto her 200 haul and whoop, there she goes. She's through her 20, she's through her 50, she's through her 200 and she's zooming, right? Over and over again. Now our 200 haul is climbing, 20, 50 is climbing and our, our 200 is just now going flat. Now is when it's strong for a breakout. She has worked her way to it. We didn't catch it early, we caught it in time. Tomorrow will probably be too late. Look at our oscillators. All of them going to the moon, ripping straight up. Look at the green bars. All of them getting bigger, 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 and bigger. RSI on fire, not a problem. This one is looking good for tomorrow, folks. She just had financials come out yesterday. All right, let's take a look at another one. This is Recon, ticker R-C-O-N. Downtrend for a long time, hit a low bubble. Off of that low, she spiked, hit the 200, but that really didn't do anything. She's come down here, and let's look at our lower corner. So, this has already happened. So, let's take a lesson from what happened before she broke out. She was on top of her 20 and her 50. She took a dip down here to the 200, bounced off of that, and then she started bouncing off of it some more. You can see it's climbing now. She's climbing, bouncing. She's putting spikes through a strong SMA, solid bar sitting on top of this SMA with a spike pushing off of that. That's a double push there. So she is put telling me she wants to climb. Then she's getting up and up and up. And as you can see, things are just climbing slowly here. But look at our 200. It's flat right now. When did it decide to break out? When it went flat. Our price gets closer and closer to the 200 and the flatter the 200 day SMA gets, the more tempting it is for a breakout. Once it breaks out, it'll normally surge a little, come back down, bounce on that 200 a couple times, and then take off if everything's looking good. 
Osculators are all looking good. Everything is ripping because she ripped. She took off from that breakoff point, which was at a buck 61, and she went to 249. Now, let me see if there's anything we're missing here. Let me look at my notes. I want to make sure I'm not missing anything here. Turning up SAs, 200 fence, strong osculators, bounce. Right, we're getting everything. That's good. So again, the same sort of chart, right? You're normally going to see a downtrend for a long time. Then you're going to see the 200 start to go flat. And if you see some green push up here in the corner and a low bubble before it, that's what you want to look at. Especially if you see a poke just as the 200 is starting to go flat. So right here is everything that's of interest to me. Oh, we just looked at that one. <laughs> Let us try grits. Ticker G-R-T-S. All right, so she was in a downtrend, really steep. Then it went flat right there. Again, we had a spike, but that really didn't hold up, did it? She went into a tailspin again. We had a bounce off here. She is coming up. Now, this really isn't an atypical breakout that you would find easily. She's bouncing off of this low bubble, putting herself up on top of some strong SMAs and starting to push off. What we haven't got here is a 200 haul. That's why it looks naked to me. We don't have a 200 haul here. So she's bouncing off of the 20. I'm presuming that when she gets up on top of the 50 here, she'll start to get some strength. Is there anything I missed here? No, I think I got them all. So that's the bottom line, folks. We are looking for charts that are coming downhill, that hit a low bubble normally, and then have a rip of green. Hopefully, it isn't cutting through the red 200 yet. And the 200 has gone flat. All of your SMAs underneath the 200 are turning up and climbing. When these cross the 200, they're golden crosses. Think of it as turbo boosts. It gives the price extra power for climbing. We want strong volume and we want our oscillators climbing. We want everything going up. That's easy enough to know. But folks, go add the 200 hull to your charts. It is key here. A flat 200 MA and a strong 200 haul on the bottom is everything I use to tell me when a bounce is going to happen. Everything else fits into those two things. H-U-L-L, -L, the 200 haul, the price's friend. So hopefully I've shared something here with you folks. Go through charts. Look for that downtrend. Look for a green check at the end underneath your 200. Zoom in. Look for those signals. Look for a bar going through the 200. Look for all your SMAs. Look for your osculators. Look for your volume. Just do it over and over and over again. Remember, folks, you don't have to know a lot about trading to get rich. Find something you can do well. Learn all you can about that one thing and just keep doing it. Wash, rinse, repeat. Wash, rinse, repeat. And if you can do something good, like identify hot breakout charts and six, seven out of 10 make you money, chances are the three you're losing, you're getting out with stop losses. Stop losses, that safety net that gets you out before it drops too far. You tell it when to sell. And you're only losing three out of 10. You're coming out way ahead here, folks. Nobody wins all their trades. But if you can win more than you're losing because you can identify hot charts, you're in the game and you're in the game to win. I hope this was as hot for you as it was for me, folks, and I hope it made sense for you. Go ahead now. It's all up to you. Go to your trading platform, figure out how to see as many charts as you can without any fuss and muss and start looking at charts. Even while you're watching TV, look at charts. The more you look at them, the more you'll understand them. Yeah, we're going to say it. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.